it's time for another quiz. What was the first world empire? Babylon. The second one? Persia. The third one? Greece. And then what came after Greece? Rome. Rome. And of course, we know about Rome. Rome even got, even expanded their empire to the land that you are standing on right here. There's an ex exhibition of Rome in Britain right upstairs. But Rome, we know of the Caesars. The, Augustus Octavian, who built up the empire, who was the, the Caesar, who was uh, the one who really started the Roman Empire, also who was the one who was ruling at the time of the birth of Jesus, or the year 1 BC and 1 AD. Well, right here in front of us, we have something, we have a column base from the Temple of Artemis. Now, let me tell you something about the Romans. The Romans were not really all that creative because basically what they did was they took all the Greek gods and they renamed them and made them their own. All right? So this is Artemis and they renamed her Diana. But it's the same god and it's the same story. Well, the temple of Artemis was in the ancient city of Ephesus, which is in Turkey. It's the best preserved ancient city of, or city of the ancient world. If you ever have a chance to go to Turkey, don't miss it. Like I said, I was there a month and a half ago. Fascinating stuff. But if you go to the site where the Temple of Artemis was, you'll see little more than just a grassy field with one little column standing right there. So this is about as good as it gets. So welcome to the Temple of Artemis, about as good as it gets for our times today. <laughs> so now this was reckoned among one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. This temple was huge. You can see this is a column base, and it's bigger than my wingspan. And this is just one column. There were over a hundred of these all around the temple. Now, this was so spectacular, it was renowned all over the empire. People would come in and visit and worship at the temple. And the city of Ephesus grew extremely influential and rich because of it. And the inner shrine of the temple was held, was basically like a treasure house or a bank that would hold riches from literally all over the Levant. Wealthy people with beautiful artifacts would come and store their fine gold and other valuables in the inner shrine of that temple. So it was basically like a bank and center right in the middle of the Temple of Artemis. Interestingly, the temple also had the right of asylum. That meant it was a law put in place so that if a criminal or if somebody was accused of killing somebody or committing a crime, they could run to the premises of the temple within one bow shot and be safe. The, rule, the law was set up so that they would have a fair trial, right? But of course, it began to be abused. So now you have the Temple of Artemis or Diana. On the inside, the, most, the best valuables from all over the world. And on the, right out on the outside, the choices selection of criminals from all over the world. <laughs> Quite an interesting place, I would say. Well, in with those criminals came a lot of interesting ideas as well. And Ephesus was renowned for being the most superstitious city in the world. They had all kinds of uh, things that they would go after. They were seeking spiritual power, if you will. They were known for magical arts and deviate, uh, divination and also communication with the dead and things like that. They were very fascinated with what happens after death and other ideas like that. So right here on this column, we have, if you can see, I'll just move around this column really quickly. There's a man right here with wings. And if you can't see now, you can just come check it out right, right after we finish. There's a man with wings and a sword. And this is Thanatos, which in Greek means death. So he's supposed to represent death. And then there's a woman right here. Here, right here is supposed to be Hermes, or the guide of souls into the underworld. All right? And then if we go on down the line, we have a woman who's standing and a man who's seated. This is supposed to be Persephone, one of the Greek goddesses, and Pluton, or Hades, who was in charge of the underworld. All right, so we have lots of ideas. They're very fascinated with spiritual power and all of these types of ideas. Well, the same Paul that we learned about in Athens came to the city of Ephesus a little bit later. And when Paul was there, at the book of Acts in the Bible records how he was able to perform miracles in the name of a man named Jesus Christ, who we proclaimed had died and risen from the dead. 
And so these miracles are happening, and there, there are seven sons of a man named Sceva that are interested in all these miraculous powers. They want in on it, right? And so, they were going along, and they got together, and they saw some spiritual power that they wanted, so they found a man who was reportedly demon-possessed. And so they said, they called out to the demon-possessed man, and they said, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, come out of him. And Acts 19 tells us that the demon-possessed man turned and he said, Jesus I know, and, Paul, and I know about Paul too, but who are you? And he turns on them and ravages them and they leave naked and bleeding. Fascinating story, and it says that the result is that in the entire superstitious city of Ephesus, the name of Jesus was held in high reverent fear. That this power of Jesus was stronger than any of these other magical arts that they were accustomed to tapping into. A fascinating story from a picture into the Empire of Rome. But if you want to go right around the corner with me, we have our last stop, the most famous artifact of this museum, and probably the most important archaeological find within the past couple of millennia. Follow me.